through. She is um, an editor with uh, Rock Paper Shotgun, which is a PC game blog. Uh, and she is very much into uh, controllers. She has devised at least three prototypes of experimental game controllers, um, which look very interesting. Uh, her talk is called Wild Rumpus. Oh my god, help me. Arc <laughs> no. The rest of the name doesn't really matter because it's not about that anymore. Good. So I was asked to give a name in advance. Didn't there know what I go. was going to say. Uh, I gave a name. There we go. So the title is irrelevant and I'm just going to give her you know, the, the room, the area. Just go ahead and enjoy. Hi. So um, this is going to be kind of a bit short. So it was already going to be free form. Who knows what will happen? It's going to be exciting. Uh, can I just say, I appreciate I've been feeling very awkward in Belgium, trying desperately to remember the few words of Dutch I know. It turns out, no, just speak in English and everyone has to deal with it. So I'm going to speak slowly. I'm going to bring it down a notch. It's OK. Everything's OK. So uh, I am a news editor with Rock Paper Shotgun. I write about video games. It's quite nice. Um, I sometimes make video games. I make real world games. And I am part of the Wild Rumpus, which is a group based in London, mostly based in London. And we put on big video game events, which come out very badly on projector screens. We um, get venues, um, bars, galleries, a boat once, a converted Cold War fishing vessel, and we fill them with people, and we fill them with video games, and we fill them with music, and everyone has a lovely time, and it's all very pleasant. Um, and we've been invited here to talk about that a bit. So we've been doing it since uh, September 2011, so three years, and we've done 12 events over the years, they've been in London mostly, but Toronto as well, and Austin, and San Francisco, we quite like. Very pleasant city. Um, and the goal of Ward Rumpus ultimately is to introduce new people to games and introduce people to new games. If you already know about games, hey, maybe we've got something new and interesting. So obviously we're focused on indie, which, gosh, does not come across in the least in these weird screens. But, uh, yeah, it, it's, it is a goal which we met best on our very first event and have been struggling to recapture ever since. Our very first event was held in a bar in one of the hip and cool and trendy areas of London. And... There were no tickets, just anyone could walk in off the streets and they might see Johann Sebastian Joust and be puzzled and pick up a controller and join in and have a weird and fun time. And they did, and they, it was great, it was brilliant. And we had, I think, um, Button brutally... Oh, God, what's it? That's it, Brutally Unfair Tactics, Totally OK Now, which is a game about... You know, ultimately shoving people. I do favor the indie games which are about shoving people. I'm quite tall. I'm good at shoving people. I like the shoving games. But we had these people who had come to this hip, cool, trendy area of London. They wanted to go to a bar. By chance, they discovered video games were in there. They liked them. It was great. We've grown a lot since then. We, um, our last event in San Francisco, we sold out, I think, 1,300 tickets. It was in the end. We had uh, a giant arts venue filled with, what did we have? We had Nidhogg, we had Muscle Cat Showdown, we had um, Fjords Forever, we had the Winnetron, we had so many different games, and we had bands, and we had music, and that's another thing we do, I should mention. You may notice lots of these people in these pictures you can't really see are boogieing to music. We have nice big parties. You need music for parties. So we've had uh, David Kanaga, who did the music for Proteus. 
we've had uh, a recurring DJ set from Philippe Le Marchand, which is uh, Fez creator Phil Fish, joining forces with Sony's Richard Le Marchand to spin a load of mashups, including a really quite excellent Sisters of Mercy mashup that the dance floor never understands, and I don't know what's wrong with them. But I got slightly distracted by thinking about that song. Very good. So we have these fun games. They are indie games. They are mostly competitive games. We want people jostling each other a bit, competing, trying to best each other, but all in the spirit of fun. And we've had to be very careful to make sure that it doesn't become too much like your standard video games event or video games culture. I don't know if you'd notice, video games culture is kind of garbage and horrible and filled with the worst people. Um, and we try to make sure we don't repeat that. So games which we know um, have very well-established player bases who are very competitive and maybe a little angry, we uh, try not to show those games because while we know they're popular, they will make people be less sunny and happy and friendly and we're here, for have, we're here to have a good time, so we don't want those. So we have um, things like Johann Sebastian Joust, of course, because shoving. Um, the Yorg actually was a rare cooperative game. It's a four-player co-op adventure game, which is weird and novel as people discover such a concept exists in the confines of a party surrounded by their friends, and they just pick up a controller and play it and are baffled and enjoy it quite a lot. But it's difficult when running a games event. It will naturally attract... Well, it will attract people who are interested in games, and we're trying to attract people who aren't interested in games, and that's one of the real difficulties of people who want to do interesting things in games is, great, I'm doing interesting things, but only the same old people are knowing about them. What can we do about that? How do we get the word out? And it's something we're still struggling with. I'm very, very pleased to see families with children roaming around. It's quite excellent here. I've been enjoying it an awful lot. They seem to be having a great time, which I think is great. But we've been becoming, uh, uh, we're running ticketed paid events now, which are great because it means that we can fly over brilliant DJs and musicians and we can hire big, great venues but at the same time, it means someone has to buy a ticket if they want to come. So they have to know that they want to come, and they have to know about it. And if they know about it and know they want to come, then we're not really introducing games to new people. It's difficult. Um, let's rummage through these cards, which are in no real particular order. And that's fine. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, so one of the main things that I've learned, and one of the main things that I enjoy with the World Rumpus is people notice and appreciate the little touches that you do with things by far the most, and they're the things that you will remember, and the things that you will take away, and the things you will tell your friends about, and the things that will make other people think, hey, that sounds interesting, maybe I'll look into it. So we had, we commissioned a game called Muscle Cat Showdown together with Brandon Boyer's Venus Patrol, and uh, it had art by uh, Natasha Allegri, who did Be and Puppycat and Adventure Time and lots of nice things. But for the controllers, we had these Xbox 360 controllers and I covered them in fun fur to make them look a bit like really manky cats and then attached horrible dangling tails to make them look even more like horrible mangled cats, which were kind of, I don't know, it started getting a bit weird. I'd been running on very little sleep when I was making this. But if you lift up the tail, there is a horrible, perfect, putter, puckered little cat bottom. And the number of people who would lift up the tail to peek at this weird cat bum on a controller and then go out and tell everyone about the time they saw a bum on a controller. It's delightful. Um, the, the head of one of the major UK video games bodies 
is convinced that she will buy them from me and she will have them in her collection just because it has bottoms, it turns out. I don't know, it's the small details. These things help these sorts of games spread and grow and these events grow, but I don't know. The reason this talk is kind of, whoops. Turns out using Windows Screensaver to display your photos isn't necessarily infallible. But the reason this talk has gone a bit slapshot is when I wrote it, I, I, I thought I had some answers, and it turns out, no, I've, I've got a lot of confusion, and I'm trying real hard, and we're trying real hard to do something new and interesting and introduce new and interesting things to new and interesting people. They're friends we've yet to meet, I'm certain. But it's difficult. The trouble is, if you just run a games event, it will inevitably tend to move in the direction of every other games event just by that's how things work. This is the kind of people it attracts, it's the kind of thing it will turn out to be and you have to actively resist it and we're trying. And I think actually this is a, a bone of contention within the world rumpus. My personal dream would be for us to ban chiptune music entirely and have no chiptune ever. I don't like chiptune at all. I understand that it sounds like music that is in a video game from the 1980s, but it's very self-referential. And when you're trying to expand into new things, those sorts of things, I don't know, they feel like barriers to someone who doesn't know what video games from the 1980s sounded like. It sounds like you're just playing some really shit drum and bass. I wouldn't want to go to that party. And I guess that's a, a, another problem that I've had with Wild Rumpus is, would I go to these things if I weren't involved and if my friends didn't already go to them? And I, I honestly don't know. I think may, maybe I wouldn't. And I've been racking my brains trying to think, what can I do that would make this the sort of thing that I would find more interesting? And I've been um, considering ideas of installations more or, or space makeovers, things which make everything feel more magical and more playful. So playful spaces, weird spaces. You walk into a room and there's just something odd about it and something magical. And there's a video game, sure, but you're just happy being there. And it turns out, by and large, at Wild Rumpus, most people are just happy to be there. We, have, we had 1,300 people at that party. I would say the majority of them didn't play a single video game. They're happy to be in a place where they can see video games and they can be with their friends and they can maybe listen to a cool DJ or a musical performer they enjoy. But it turns out people are just happy looking at games and being around them and those are the things that they tend to get exposed to more than anything. It's the idea of the game which comes across in a, a public setting. Most people won't pick it up, they won't play it, they won't understand why it's um, somehow mechanically or systemically or kinesthetically interesting. They will see it happening and draw a conclusion based on that, which is weird and interesting. It seems most people who come to World Rumpuses, they either don't play any games or they play one or two games and after that they just hang around. They, they like the space, they like the people, but it turns out the games are kind of tangential. It's just bringing together people who like play and they like games and they want to support and explore them, but mm, they don't really care that much. I've been to every World Rump well, I've been to every World Rumps event in England at least, and some in America. I think I've played about two games, and I help run them, and I just play the games where I get to push people, because it turns out people are quite reluctant to let me push them unless there's supposedly a game involved. But there's a really interesting thing with those sorts of games actually. Um, Johann Sebastian Joust uh, and Button and we have a game sometimes called Sword Fight where two players, I'm just checking, children are, two players have um, strap-on dildo harnesses which contain Atari 2600 joysticks 
and your objective is to attempt to bash the other player's button. And they're, they're, you know, they're not necessarily the, 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 the best games. Actually, Joust is the best game. Sorry, I take that back. Um, but it's the way that they bring people together and make them interact playfully with each other. I mean, Joust is technically a computer game, but people don't notice, they don't really care, they've got a magic thing in their hand, that's okay. But I always enjoy watching how people... There are no real fixed rules. So Joust is a game, if you haven't played it, which is reasonable, because it's only just been released and requires PlayStation Move controllers. So who the hell plays it unless you go to indie games events? But uh, it's a multiplayer competitive game where each player holds a PlayStation Move controller. And if your controller is jostled too much, then you get knocked out of the round and whoever's, lost, whoever's left standing wins. And that's basically all it is. So there's a greater thing in um, how hard players are willing to push. There's an unwritten, unspoken social contract of okay, I want to win this, but I don't want to push you too hard. And then someone else comes along, and they're thinking, you're really small. <laughs> I bet I can push you over. I'm not saying that's me, but there are people who do that. And it's fascinating, you know, watching these kind of playful dynamics uh, shape. And at this point, I'm just talking about Joust, because I really like Joust. Uh, so I'm going to boo, 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 return to the notes, toss them around. So we have had an interesting thing. Oh, gosh, what's that? Oh, that's an unpleasant one. Let's not look at that one. Uh, so World Rumpus has also become something of a brand at this point, which I guess we weren't really expecting. So as well as these playful, roughhousing indie video game nights. We also, at GDC, the Games Developers Conference in San Francisco, this year we had the Mild Rumpus, where we bought a load of cheap, horrible sofas and some really ugly furniture and some just dire, ugly rugs. And we set them up in the conference center as these weird lounges and we put down a load of big bean bags and some nice relaxing games, things like uh, Hohokam by Honey Slug, which is about a giant worm thing flying around and generally being a nuisance with no real goal, but it has colors and nice noises. It's very relaxing. Or uh, Quadrilateral Cowboy, which is a first person game about hacking, but it's you know a bit silly and it's quite fun. But we just had this giant um, relaxing space. And it turns out you can do that once something becomes established enough, which is quite nice. Um, or at Toronto, at a, a comics convention last weekend, we were selling Rumpus in a Bag, which was a, a party bag with some balloons and stickers and badges, because apparently you need stickers and badges at indie events but also some Steam codes for some of our kind of favorite pleasant local multiplayer games, kind of spreading the playful message. It's weird. I don't know. I like the idea that uh, we would have perhaps a sensual rumpus or a friendly rumpus or just a nice rumpus or maybe a sad rumpus. Ones where, I mean, we've, I guess, discovered that we can quite reliably make people go into a room and maybe not play a video game, but look at it. So well, what else can we do? We can definitely make them compete. Most games are set up for competition, but I don't know. Can we make them cry? Can we make everyone cry? What's the saddest video game in the world? I understand a dog dies in some game and that's sad. Can we just show video game dogs dying and make everyone cry? Or make them kill their dogs? I don't know how these things work, but I'm told there are top developers devoted studying day and night and covering the mysteries of making you cry because it's the ultimate emotional expression for people who are confused by emotions. I don't know. I mean, I'll cry at a sad song on the radio. It doesn't seem like the biggest thing, but I like the idea that we could perhaps get people together in spaces and make them sad 
or make them scared or make them a bit randy. I don't know. There's a lot of potential which we're not really exploring just by putting people in a room and making them have fun. <laughs> fun. Um, I have no idea what time it is. I've just been talking into this microphone for some time. Well, I've hit my 20 minutes, but uh, do I have time for I don't know, questions? Because I've laid out some very firmly structured arguments, <laughs> and if you've got responses to any of them, you've been thinking it over. I know. <laughs> no? <laughs> All right, you had me at sword fights.